I am very pleased to be here. I am uh, alumni from Universidad Panamericana, so it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I beg you mercy because I haven't given a, an English presentation <laughs> since 10 years ago, so I, I am going to try to do it the best. Coparmex, I don't know if you uh, know what Coparmex is, but it's a union of uh, owners of business, of companies. Our, uh, our objective is to uh, do business, putting the person in the center of everything. So we always are working uh, towards solidarity, subsidiarity, uh, common uh, good, and of course, uh, many other principles that uh, we, we propose. There's a new project that we are uh, projecting in Coppermex, and we are going to talk uh, of it, but later. We will begin uh, talking about family responsible companies. Uh, if we want a world where everything is uh, with justice, and where uh, babies and uh, sick and elders uh, and women and men and young have the same opportunities. We have to think in the place where everything begins uh, when we think about money, when we think about professional uh, development. So. We have to begin thinking that reality is superior to idea, that the things in the world have changed very much. Over the three last decades, transcendent social demographic changes have occurred, but we are not taking that into consideration. Women have entered the labor market in large, large numbers, and this is seen, I mean, if you go to, to search uh, for a job, I have three kids that have run out from the university and it's very difficult for them because today not only men are looking for work, but women are looking for work and the places in the enterprises are limited. So this is uh, one thing. The other thing is that the rate of divorce has increased. And this is very natural, I mean, uh, we were not uh, accustomed to uh, be, well, our parents, our grandparents were not accustomed to be with another that had to go to work to, to, to bring to the family money to live in a decent way. Today, we need both uh, salaries, mothers and fathers, and that's very di difficult because we are uh, always in a dialogue. Who goes first, who goes second, who grows, who, who doesn't grow, who goes to another part of the world because that uh, employment is better than the other. It's a very difficult thing to conciliate. And the number of single parents families, likewise. I am a single mother. I, I, I divorced when I was uh, almost 30 years. And I had to, to grow my, my children alone. And it's a very difficult thing. I mean, you have to be the perfect mother, but you have to be the perfect uh, enterprise, uh, director of, of our enterprise, in my case. But you have to have social responsibility, and you have to, to, to do it the best. So this is very difficult, but there are all uh, another men, for example, that have to face this, this same problem, and it's a very difficult one. The birth rate has never been lower uh, as a consequence, but diseases as stress and depression are uh, also on the rise because people don't know what to do to solve this enigma. How can I consile all the aspects of my life, of my professional, family, and social life. But the organizations are not taking this into consideration. Uh, they manage uh, the, the job uh, in the same way they have managed for, for uh, centuries. Work is still basically designed for male employees. 
and uh, the working hours are totally incompatible with other needs such as caring for dependents, children, sick, and el elderly. And being home is almost impossible. Uh, COVID helped, uh, helped in, in the sense that we uh, knew that we can do the things in a different way. But not all the enterprises are doing it. Not all the enterprises learned for, from it. Not all the enterprises um, did things that in the long term have sustainability in this thing. Uh, for example, uh, home uh, work is not uh, a practice that is common in many enterprises. So it's a dilemma again, if I take care of my babies or my father that is sick or uh, is old. And more people experience major conflicts among different areas of their lives. And we are talking about women and men. And I mean, this is not a problem of women. And uh, this is a, a thing that we have to take into consideration because when we speak about family and work conciliation, we almost uh, think uh, of, uh, we always think in women and that is not true. It's a matter of men and women. Uh, as we can see, family is the ignore stakeholder. We are always uh, uh, talking about the clients and uh, the investors and the directors and the employees, but as employees, not as collaborators, not as person, a person that has a lot of things uh, to do and to have relation with more than the work. So we have to begin to consider family as our stakeholder. And I want to talk about two essential premises. The first one is that a family responsible company is not a women's issue, as I told you. It's a men and women's issue that in complementation form, feed, build a family and maintain, support, and strengthen it for the benefit of the people who make it up of society, the company, the country, and the world. Family is a, a matter of everyone, not only of the people that is in that family. And the company, the enterprise, has to take care of it as a men's and women's responsibility. The second essential premise is that the family is the base and nucleus of the social vertebration in two ways, in two different ways. Family is a benefit of the person, of the person, for the person. We have to think that every person that is in a family receives a lot of things from the family. Family is an antidote against individualism, for example. But family is the environment conducive to a personal development also. But family is a transmitter of life, spiritual and, and, and physical life. I mean, when we are sad, family is the place where we receive life again. Uh, family is the educator of virtues and values, and family is where the people acquire and develop competencies. These are going to be used at the companies. And the family is a benefit for society also. Uh, family guarantees the intergenerational -gener solidarity. And, uh, for example, the nieces with the uncles, with the grandfathers, with Everyone has a relationship to support one another. A family is the forger of social cohesion. This that in Mexico we are losing, as you can almost all of you know because of the news, we have to reconstitute social cohesion. Family is generation of social capital but family, if we are talking about enterprises and money and uh, consumers, 
is the pillar of the economic system. I mean, the members of the family produce and consume goods and services. So we need strong families to have better consumers. If the family doesn't work, if the family has another needs because it is broken apart, so they are not going to consume and they are not going to produce as we need them to produce. In consequence, work time must not be organized as if the people who work in a company had nothing else to do in their lives. We have to consider that a person has a lot of things to do. Of course, that the work is an essential part of their lives, but they are husbands, they are sons, they, they, have, they, are, they have friends, and they participate in another social movement. And we have to understand that, that betting on the family is not at expense. It is an investment. So is, if we as companies uh, have the, uh, and, and uh, celebrate the family day, we are investing in our company, of course, in the, in the families of our collaborators, but in our company. Productivity depends to a great extent on the stability of the person and therefore the stability of the family. If you have a, a person that, that is getting a divorce or that is sick or that is sad, he or she is not going to be as productive as they could be. And we have to understand that and we have to prevent that. This, the, the conciliation, work and family, I consider is a matter of human ecology. And we have to give that relevance to the topic. We uh, had a diagnosis, uh, the reality of Mexican companies, with an institute that is uh, presided by, by Juan Antonio Valjar, Lopez Valjar, here in Mexico, with uh, Mexican companies, with Copermex companies, in order to know how uh, Copermex, that uh, has a very humanistic uh, philosophy, uh, are taking this, this important matter, the family in the company. Uh, before uh, telling you how was that, that uh, diagnosis, I want to tell you that in Mexico, we are not committed to this issue that we are talking about. I hope in other countries, uh, they are committed. In Mexico, we are not committed. Mexico has 37 conventions, no ratified before the ILO. Uh, I am going to speak about only two, the 166 and the 1981. The 166 about the Convention on Workers with Family Responsibilities, and the 1981 on Equal Opportunities and Treatment between Male and Female Workers with Family Responsibilities. Both could influence the diagnosis of appropriate policies and measures to concile work and family life, to promote female employment, and the incorporation of men in care of domestic work. Still, Mexico hasn't signed that, hasn't ratified those uh, conventions. And, and it's even sadder. Uh, in Iberoamerica, only Nicaragua and Brazil have a family ministry. Only Argentina, Panama, and Guatemala have a second level organization. In Mexico, we have a third level organization, DIF, and I am not going to talk more about it because <laughs> basically it doesn't do anything for family. So, and less for family responsible companies or nothing like that, or public policies or nothing at all. So this is very sad. I mean, if the family is the nucleus of the society and of the company, where are we leaving family in, in public policies? It's, it's, it's un understandable. Uh, it's not working, the, the PowerPoint. Can you help me, please? It doesn't. Um, 
move. Okay. Some data on Mexican enterprises, the result criteria. Uh, you are going to see uh, these four colors, red lights, passive, committed, uh, highly committed. Of course, when uh, an indicator is in red light, uh, the enterprise is not doing anything about the problem. Passive, uh, more or less committed, they have policies, but not all the, the, the policies they would have. And highly committed, they are very committed with, with this topic. Next, please. Uh, these are the five topics that we are taking, uh, that we took into consideration to evaluate uh, with these uh, enterprises that resolve this, this, this poll. Uh, one is about economic development and family wealth. The second is equity between women and men. The third is spatial and temporal flexibility. The fourth is uh, physical and mental health. And the last is integration and family formation. We are going to go by one by one. Next, please. Uh, the pillar with the highest number of red flags and the one with the lowest score was the pillar of integration and family formation. This being the pillar with actions most di directly related to the family. Almost 1% uh, of the enterprises uh, do things directly for the family, for example, capacitation of the family day or something like that. I mean, if you see, 51% is passive. It's, it's, it's terrific. Uh, next, if we uh, speak about spatial and temporal flexibility, um, it's a pillar that despite having been watershed for the economy to continue functioning during the pandemic has decreased, as I had told you. In many cases, the achievements and advances were cut short by a lack of, of prof professionalization and culture that allows sustainable programs. If you see 43% is passive, 15% is red light. I mean, all 24% uh, is doing something to have this flexibility. And it, it, it's, uh, if you look at the, uh, the problem down, is 3.4 of 10 points. We are very, very, very low. Next, please. In the third place, we have the pillar of physical and mental health in the family where we find 48% of passive companies. This being a pillar that is considerably affect the effectiveness of employees. As I told you, if we are not uh, health in our physical uh, and mental uh, health, we are not going to be productive. Uh, but the companies are not doing enough in this topic. Uh, if we talk about the, the next, please, the pillar of equity between women and men, uh, that is in second place, it sounds out as the pillar with the largest number or highly committed companies, that is the largest number, uh, the, uh, in which the policies that carry out essential and innovative actions to achieve equality between women and men. We have 37% uh, of committed and 23% of highly committed. This is a topic that uh, in Mexico uh, is very, very spoken, is very diagnosed. So uh, uh, the companies have um, more policies about this, but we have 40% that is doing nothing. And last, the, the, the last question, next please. Uh, the first place we have the pillar of family, economic, and patrimonial development, where 56% is committed. If, you, if we go with highly committed, we are talking about 70%. But it's not only the topic of uh, economic remuneration. We have here to look another kind of remuneration, like the emotional salary, uh, the salary that contributes to harmonious development between work and family life. Next. 
consequences of not having a family responsible company, we are leaving them in Mexico and in Latin America, as far as I know. Uh, we have the rupture of the social fabric that we can see them in, in, in many ways. Family disintegration, more divorces, children leaving home, less school level, and of course, delinquency and ninis no, don't work and don't uh, study uh, increased because we don't have this balance, this conciliation that uh, are necessary for the person that is working with us in our enterprises. Next. What to do from the company? I mean, we, we have this diagnosis. It's a, uh, from my point of view, it's a terrible diagnosis. I am almost sure that if we had enterprises, big, medium, uh, mini enterprises, with this view, uh, with this perspective, perspective of family, with this view of conciliation of the work and the family, we will have better societies. Uh, but we have to do something, and we have to do something from the company and from the society. We are going to talk now from the company. Next. Next, please. How to approach the challenge. A true and, com a true and complete portrait of human being should uh, account for a person's unitary makeup with all four dimensions, material, spiritual, individual, and social. That is a person, a complete person, not, not, not only economic. These are the four, the four levels, the four uh, dimensions of a person. And to have a complete vision of a person makes up companies should also have aware of the motivations that can satisfy a human being's need in, in, in these four dimensions. The motivations that can uh, help the human being in the, in the four dimensions are extrinsic, intrinsic, and transcendent. Extrinsic is remuneration, is uh, praise for work done, is more su superficial. If you go to intrinsic, is knowledge, is being better, is doing better things, is uh, to learn. But if we go to transcendent, is helping, is giving a good service, is uh, building my family, is building uh, strong relationships in job and in society and in family. So as enterprises, we have to uh, encourage the three dimensions. I mean. People is not only going to have transcendent motivation. I mean, they have to eat and they have to learn, but they have to transcend too. Next, please. The way an organization conceives the relationships between work and family depends on two things. How the organization conceives the person, as I have told you in the four uh, approaches and the nature of the managerial function. This second one will depend on how the organization conceives the, the, the person. So we are going to go deeper in this. Next, please. Uh, Perez Lopez has the mo this model of people and organizations that I recommend you to study. It's, it's great. We have three kinds of uh, conceptions. The mechanistic, the psychosociological, and the anthropological. In the mechanistic, the model of organization is like a machine. The person is a stable system, and the motivation is extrinsic. So if we go and search the, dimension, the dimensions of the organization, we are going to have efficiency. And the talent of the manager needed is only to be a strategist. But if we go, to a psychosociological, we have a social organism with a, a person on a, a ultra stable system with motivation intrinsic and extrinsic, and we incorporate in the dimension of the organization attractiveness 
and we incorporate the talent of a manager and executive. When we go to the anthropological, we have an institution with values, with a freely adaptive system, with transcendent motivation, with unity in values, and the manager is not only a strategic executive, but also a leader. Next, please. If we uh, take this model to the work and family uh, model, we have that only the anthropological one responds to what the person is. In, the, the, in this relationship, if you want, uh, we will be giving this presentation so that you can have it. But uh, as you can see, in the anthropological model, the company is a family responsible employer, is proactive. We, the employer, is evaluated according to his or her contributions to fulfillment of, of objectives, not only to be seated in, in, in the office. And we are taking care of effective needs of the person, of the being of the person. And the work family policies are not only legislation or marketing or retention and attraction, but employee commitment. So, it changes everything. Next, next, please. The key is a cultural change. I mean, we have to be the person as a center where the family of our collaborator, uh, collaborators are very important stakeholders, where our motivations, in addition to being intrinsic and extrinsic, are also transcendent. Next, please. In Coparmex, we have a, a, a proposition about this, MDI, eh, Modelo de Desarrollo Inclusivo in Spanish. Eh, if everyone, if anyone wants to know about this more, eh, you can contact me and we can go deeper in this thing. But the, it's, it's a proposition where we put the person at the center with sustainable economic development, political development, and social development. And uh, we are acting as our ent as enterprises with this model. Next, please. What to do from society? We have three things, uh, three things to do. Next. The first thing is not to have a wrong approach. This is not a matter of women, I insist. This is a matter of uh, men and women that together are building a society. Next, please. We have three proposals. First, paradigm shift, where we are allies. Men and women are allies. Next, create a first level transversal organism in every country. We need family perspective in uh, public policies. We cannot uh, forget family. Family, I insist, is the nucleus of society. And the third one, multi-sectorial linkage to put the person at the center of priorities. Government, unions, social initiative, and companies, each one working from their own space. And the last one is conclusion. It's essential to retain talent through policies and cultural culture that supports employees' personal development and his her family. An employee is a person with varied interests and different roles in his or her life. And family responsible employers are not a luxury, but a necessity for the 21st century society, in which both men and women work outside home and need to reduce the stress to become better professional spouses, parents, and citizens. So, uh, well, thanks for the expo. It was awesome. And the question is, we see this trend of employees in companies getting married but having children because they are devoted to their work. What message, what message should companies send to encourage friends and families also? I mean, uh, it's. I mean, this is a social responsibility. Of course, it's a matter of uh, an, uh, enterprises, but it's a social responsibility. And the policies must uh, be given from the government, encouraged by society and encouraged by unions and encouraged by enterprises. I mean, this is a collective uh, responsibility, not only uh, enterprises, but uh, we must insist in the personal formation of uh, the people. 
Each person has to search for the job that goes with his or her values. Because if we work in a place that is not, that doesn't represent our values, uh, we are uh, broken when we try to leave family, when we try to educate children, when we try to have children. Because in some enterprises, that is not good looking. So that's... My name is August. I introduced myself already today. Um, what, which country is a role model regarding uh, family policy? Um, uh, I would invite you to read Noria Chinchilla. She has a lot of uh, reference uh, regarding this topic. And reading her, uh, I learned that, uh, for example, uh, Finland is a very good model. They have, for example, this, this, poli uh, this policy that when you have a children, you can be um, part-time in your job and your spouse uh, has a full time, but you can uh, change roles. So in part-time, can be taken for your spouse to take care of the children. That is one of the policies. But they have a lot of policies. To look into a Finland model is a very good idea. OK, thank you. Then I have a little other question. Uh, is it possible to share your presentation? Yes, of course, of course. Private? My name is Christy Obuya from Nairobi, Kenya. I am a counselor particularly giving mental health services in prison settings, but that is not my comment for today. I just wanted to add remarks on how the family is the center of everything. And I had done, for my dissertation, I studied the superwoman syndrome as it applies to working women in Kenya. And just to agree with your presentation, what I found is that, unlike what has been perpetrated a lot by the West, that women entered the workforce because of they wanted to empower themselves. They sort of felt like they were slaves in their family. That is not what my research showed. My research showed that most women are actually going to work to help support um, or increase the financial freedom and economy and just help support their partners in providing a better lifestyle for their children. So at the end of the day, their entry into their workforce, their work was also to contribute equally contribute into the family. Another interesting thing I found is that most of the women I surveyed who had career breaks was due to um, either they came from, they did their maternity leave but felt they were not ready to go back to work or their, their organizations were sort of hostile in terms of adjusting the woman's schedule or adjusting her schedule to accommodate her new role, which is her mother. So they often find that, yes, they were not um, fired per se, but they, they found themselves like they were forced to quit, you know, to be better mothers, to raise their children, you know, to be able to be, to go home, go home at an appropriate hour, which I thought was not right. So I do agree that we need to have a holistic approach when it comes to the workplace and family balance. Thank you. I love your, your testimony. I think that when you can have the time and the, and the mood and the, the, the skills to be at home with your kids and be at work in the work in, in, in a complete way, you are more productive you are more happy, you can educate better your children. I mean, the, the, the life goes well. When you have to choose, that's something inside that breaks and you are not good in any one of the, uh, the places. So thank you.